What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Whew. I am, it's crazy. I started live streaming at 9.30 in the morning. It's after 1 o'clock. And I want to say shout out to DMV who was live streaming from 1 o'clock um, all the way through to the end of the Cowboys game with that rain delay. This has been a long, long day. Um, I live streamed over 15 and a half hours today, which is insane. Um, I might as well have just stayed on and just done a 24-hour stream, but... I'm coming down now, and I have to say that people, I grew up with Roger Staubach, who was known as Captain Comeback. I grew up with the Hail Mary, which was literally, you know, you are basically praying for some miracle to happen. I come from the mentality of, I will find a way to get things done. That's my mentality. Not giving up, no matter how bad it looks or what the chances are of getting something to succeed. So many of you all are so ready at the drop of a hat to just say, oh, it's over. People were saying it's over in the first freaking quarter. What is wrong with y'all? Haven't you seen enough football to see times where a team doesn't deserve to win but somehow finds a way to come back? I can think about the Chargers literally getting four takeaways in the first quarter, being up 27 to nothing, and losing to the Jaguars. So the Jaguars' defense clamped down and brought them back. I've seen so many games that you thought were over and to only see the team that everybody thought was going to win lose. Maybe some of y'all haven't experienced that. But even my own son is like, it's over, it's over. It's not over. So here we are. As I said to people before, all the doom and gloom all this season is it, you know, this season we got no chance. We got all these injuries. You know, this is a lame duck year. Mike McCarthy's going to get fired. Jerry Jones is doing a soft rebuild and yada, yada, yada. I have seen this team written off so many times before. But yet somehow they keep finding a way to win, at least until the playoffs. Some of y'all that immediately have this defeatist attitude, I hope that this is only with the Dallas Cowboys. I hope in your life that at the drop of the hat, you just don't say, oh, it's over with, I'm done. That you're not in a relationship or a marriage that at the first time that there's a problem, and trust me, in every relationship, any long-term one, there's going to be problems. That instead of giving up, that you find a way to make shit work. No matter how bad things seem. And tonight was one of those nights. You sit there and you see, after knowing that Micah Parsons is gone, that D-Law is gone, that Deron Bland's not back, that um, uh, Seelan uh, is out, Carson, that Brandon Cooks is now gone, hey, it's next man up. And then the game starts and you see Marshawn Nealon. Looks, with, looks like a knee injury, and Tyler Guyton go down, people, oh, it's over, it's over, it's over. But you know what? We're here with the game balls. The game balls. You know what? Sometimes in life, people don't change what they're doing because they're comfortable with it until they're forced to change to do something different. And what happens sometimes when you're forced to do something different you find out, hey, wait a minute, this actually works better. Now, 
I'm going to say that Tyler Guyton, who played right tackle in college, being a first-round draft pick, being put on the island, which is the hardest spot to be on the offensive line, has had some good plays, but is struggling with people going on the inside. And I believe part of that problem is, is because he's transitioning from the right side to the left side while he's transitioning to being an NFL player. Him getting hurt, I hope he's not hurt seriously, but this might be an opportunity for him to catch his breath and maybe for the Cowboys to reevaluate things with him. Because moving Tyler Smith to tackle, set the edge. And Josh Ball, he did have a penalty in there, but Josh Ball played pretty good at guard. And I'm going to put out here and say maybe with Tyler Guyton, maybe we might need to look at putting him at least for the rest of this year to cover up on the right side because Terrence Steele is struggling. Now, I will say Terrence Steele was going against one of the best in the business in T.J. Watt. So I can't be completely mad at that, but there was honestly, that lineup that we had on the offensive line clearly was better in the second half than it was in the first half. So I have to actually give credit because the offensive line going against the Steelers' defense, and the Steelers' defense don't act like they're slouches. That defense was one of the best in the business this year so far. So for the Cowboys to go on a road on a wet field and to be able to come away with the victory, you got to give some credit to that offensive line, at least that shakeup. And for Tyler Smith to jump out there to left tackle and not skip a beat, Tyler Smith, you've got to get a game ball. I don't know what the stats are with Cooper Beebe, but we've got ourselves a true center right there. Cooper Beebe holding down the middle. We get pressure, but not much of it's coming from the middle right in there. Not from the spot where Cooper Beebe is. Cooper Beebe, he's got to get one. And Josh Ball coming off of the bench and playing left guard played pretty good coming in there cold. So all in all, that offensive line was good. Rico Dattle. Rico, who looked hesitant some of the times early in the game, but again, when that offensive line changed up, it seemed like they were much better at running the football. And Rico, best game of his career, although although he had that fumble down on the goal line. I'm not sure that he should be the goal line guy, but he, without him turning up those yards, getting some balance for the Cowboys offense, we don't get that win. Rico, shout out to Rico. We finally rushed for over 100 yards in a game this season the very first time where we literally were the worst team at running the football all year long, all year. Rico, you've got to get a game ball, dude. <sighs> Jalen Tolbert. Jalen Tolbert, with that touchdown catch in the end. Jalen Tolbert, um, right now, Jalen Tolbert is playing better than what Brandon Cooks are playing this year. And he definitely is becoming a really good receiver. Now, he definitely pumped up his stats. He had 440 yards going into this game. I think he was close to 100. So with him, he's well over 500 yards in his career, um, definitely starting out, and definitely you can see the work that him and Dak Prescott had this offseason together, and you can see they're on the same page. Jalen Tober, you my man, buddy. You my man. Um, Ferguson, Fergie, Fergalicious, okay? I know some of you guys are like, I can't say Fergalicious. I can say Fergalicious, damn it. I'm, hey, look, I am secure in my maleness, okay? I can say Fergalicious. Ferguson is becoming that safety valve, that, that security blanket, that guy that's making valuable catches and first downs. And that tight end is the guy... That, that playmaker, tight end guy, is the guy we've missed since Jason Witten <clears throat> has been young, okay? And we need that guy. That tight end is more important sometimes than that number one receiver. Take a look at the teams that are in the Super Bowl. One of the things that I'll always have in common is they've got a great playmaking tight end, and we have not had that for a long time. 
And right now, Ferguson, who we looked at for a minute there, thinking he was the goss for the season, and ended up being that MCL and he only missed one game, dude is balling out. Balling out. So he has to get a game ball. My quarterback. My quarterback, Dak. Everybody's looking for me to trash Dak. When you go blame Dak. Dak had a bad game. He had the two interceptions. I don't. Th I don't know that, that there's the clip of C.D. Lamb. Um, some, it, I, I. I don't read lips, but I don't know if C.D. was saying that's on me or or you know whatever it was. It seemed like they weren't on the same page. It seemed like they weren't on the same page. Shit happens. People throw interceptions. Pat Mahomes throwing five interceptions. The fumble. I don't know that there was enough time to get the ball away, but you got You got You've got a whole little bit of football. And the deep one where we went for, I don't know why we went for that deep pass. When we were churning up and taking our time, you know, off the clock, we were running the football real well. I know we had that penalty after we got the first down that backed it up 15 yards, but that was when we should have been a little more conservative. Maybe they're going for the juggler or whatever, but turned it over. And, of course, the Steelers go down and take the lead. But... Two things that happened there at the end. We get all the way down there, and shout out to Hunter Lipke, because Hunter Lipke is my Mike Allstott, okay? You're in good hands with Allstott. Hunter Lipke is getting a little bit of playing time in that screen pass where he went for 15 yards and bulldozing over people, getting us down to the five-yard line I'm in, in, in range there. When Rico fumbled that football, Dak Prescott getting that fumble. Dak doesn't get that fumble. The game's over. It's over. You got to give Dak Prescott. Yeah, you know, I'm killing him for the interceptions and the, the fumble, but he got the shit together to get that one, and on fourth down to get the pass to Tolbert. You got to give him some credit on that, people. I'm having a bad game. Forgets about it, keeps on throwing the rock, gets the fumble, we get the win. Dak Prescott, you gotta get it. You gotta get one. Um, our defense. Our defense, this was the best performance we've had on defense, I'm gonna say, this season. Without D Law and without Micah Parsons, this is where I say sometimes you don't change things until you're forced to change. I don't know if. Micah Parsons plays hero ball and sometimes leaves things open. I don't know. I don't know if we rely on Micah so much and people look at it, Micah's going to make the play, and that they relax and that they looked at it today and said, we've got to step up, or if they call the, dip, the defense differently because Micah's not there and looking for his playmaking ability, and they play more straight-up defense, we got to look at the film and find out. But the defensive front, they only gave up 90 yards on the ground. And for the Cowboys, that's a great game defensively. And I'm going to still say, Mozzie Smith is stepping up and playing in the middle. You're seeing him penetrate. He's not getting back, pushed back out there with the safety. The defensive front, all the way across the board. I saw Osin Digazua, I believe, with a sack in there. I saw Goldston in there with a sack. I saw Tyron Wheat having some great plays. We stepped up on the defensive front. And you have to give that whole defensive line a game ball. The secondary, they bent. They didn't give up. You know, Justin Fields had over 300 yards last week passing, and people were comparing him yesterday to Pat Mahomes. Okay? To Pat Mahomes. So, the Cowboys... Kept the Steelers around 200 yards total offense. You got to look at that defense and say, Mike Zimmer got that defense to play with a multitude of injuries. We have been completely decimated on the defense. And for them to come through on the road and play like that, you got to get the defense ball. We had so many things that were hurting us, and sometimes you're not going to play well. But you find a way to win. You had the, <clears throat> what should have been a first down, that should have been 
calling for a review that we didn't. And then you had the review where we called for one when it was, it looked like it was a fumble, but he got it back that we shouldn't have. <clears throat> you got the blocked kick. You had the three turnovers. The Cowboys should not have won that game with all of those things that were going against them. But yet they found a way to win. And that's actually what good teams do. You may not think the Cowboys are a good team, but you know what? They found a way to win on the road. And before anybody says, oh, it was just the Steelers, they're a tomato can, all of the damn experts on ESPN, every single one of them picked the Steelers. So I don't want to hear that the Steelers, well, they were just a bad team. I don't want to hear it. I don't want the revisionist history. The Cowboys found a way to win against the Steelers on the road, and they're 3-2. and two. And they got a chance to play the Lions next week. And I'm going to deal with this thing every week. I'm not going to be one of these ones that are the doom and gloom, the woe is me, the Cowboys suck, get rid of Dak, trade Dak, you know, blah, blah. Forget it. Take it one week at a time. And I'm going to enjoy this week. I'm going to enjoy this week because it's another victory. And I can go on the Dan Salino show and say, you know what? Cowboys got a victory. Got a victory. The Eagles, no, they didn't. But they didn't lose either today because they're on their bye week. And that's all you can ask for in the NFL is finding a way to win. So with that being said, it's probably 1.30 in the morning. And um, I got to get my ass up in the morning so we can get to work on taking off this roof. As always, you know I appreciate you guys. And I love you guys. And um, remember, tell the people you love how much you love them, because you might not get the chance again. And I love you guys. Mm. What a day. What a day. Good night, good people. Oh. Sixteen plus hours. Wow. <laughs>